He's just admitting what is clear from the Greek text, which is that Jesus is talking about actually eating his flesh and actually drinking his blood under the form of real food and real drink. Now, if you have any doubts about that, you can look at Jesus' last words in the gospel for today. Once he has revealed this mystery of his real presence in the bread and wine, the food and drink that he's going to give, he leaves his audience with one last clue to grasping the mystery. Because you gotta, you gotta feel a little sorry for them. Uh, how are they supposed to take all this in? How are they supposed to understand it? Especially given the, the fact that the law had prohibited the consumption of animal blood. How could they possibly understand what this man was saying when he says, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood? I mean, think about it, put yourself in their place. If you heard that there was a teacher or a prophet, you know, who had risen in popularity, uh, and maybe he was from a town not far away, and he came and he was speaking, if you heard him actually get up in the synagogue and say, okay, now you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, your natural response is going to be first revulsion, uh, because you're going to assume that he's talking about cannibalism, right? Eating his corpse, cannibalizing his dead body. Uh, and then second, it's going to be, so I would say, confusion or doubt, skepticism about the man's sanity. Because if he is actually asking you to cannibalize his corpse, he's not in his right mind. So it's easy for you, it's easy for us, if we've grown up Catholic, if we've grown up with the, the teaching of the real presence as something we've learned from a young age, to just kind of be, you know, nonchalant or, 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 or you know, ho-hum about, oh, well, sure, it's his body and blood, of course, that makes perfect sense. But if you try to put yourself back in the shoes of people hearing this message for the first time, the offense is really... Um, strong. The scandal here, the potential scandal of his words, is undeniable. And the fact that he heightens the scandal by using this word trogain, trogo, uh, which can only be used for a realistic act of eating, uh, just takes it to the next level and really makes uh, it hard to understand how anyone might not have just walked away from Jesus' words. And as we'll see, that's going to be a response that some people have. But with all that said, I think it's really crucial to point out that Jesus doesn't leave them just with the realistic affirmation. He also gives them a clue. He gives them a, a, a kind of a window or an insight into how to understand the mystery that he's just revealed to them. And that clue is the manna. This is really important. The Bread of Life Discourse book...